a nation. History bears testament to those who have led a nation. From the early kings that united warring tribes to create some semblance of a nation, to those that have caught the spirit and essence of their people and turned it into the ingredients to forge empires. We have seen those who have risen to lead. Kings, queens, emperors, revolutionaries, generals, presidents and prime ministers. Each has sought to harness the power of a nation and with it govern it. Some seek stability, others glory and conquest, and others wish to make the nation great again. From Julius Caesar to Margaret Thatcher, from Cleopatra to JFK, from Queen Elizabeth to Winston Churchill, and from Wu Zetian to Barack Obama, we have witnessed leaders rise and great and the greedy, the peaceful and the pugilists, the builders and the bringers of destruction. The world has witnessed many leaders, but what if your favorite YouTubers found themselves installed as a leader of a nation, be it an existing one or a virgin nation state? How would they lead? What would change? What would remain? What would their key policies be? What would be the national anthem? Who would form their cabinet? How would they rule? Well, you are about to find out in H.G. Tudor's exciting new series, if I ruled my world, where YouTubers hold the reins of power and you decide if you want them as your leader. Hello, I'm HG Tudor and welcome to If I Ruled My World, the series where you get to hear the views and policies in relation to certain YouTubers who have been handed the reins of power in the formation of a nation. They can choose an existing nation that they want to modify, having come to power, or it could be entirely fictional, albeit it is in the world as we know it to be on planet Earth. And today I'm joined by our recollections may vary. Recollections, hello. Hello, HG. It's great talking to you. Thank you for coming along and sharing with us your vision. Now, this nation that you're now the installed prime minister or president or grand supreme poobah, whatever your title <laughs> might be, what's this country called? It's called Atlantis. Atlantis. Okay. Why Atlantis? Because it, well, it, it's kind of a uh, a utopia, and I, it was originally a utopia, but I saw someone else had used that, so it mm. was. I was debating between the two, and I went with Atlantis because it because it has a water element, which will make sense. And does water serve a particular fascination for you? No, it just has to do with kind of my my overall guiding principle. It's it's kind of that it can wipe things clean. Oh, I see a purifying aspect to it. Yes. Cleansing. So you're not a sort of wannabe Poseidon. No. <laughs> All right. Okay. So Atlantis is the name of the country recollections. What's its capital? Akateri. Akateri. Is actually, it's an archaeological site on Santorini that is one of the potential original lost colonies of Atlantis. Well, that makes perfect sense as to why you've selected that. Mm -hmm. And in this capital, 
what would your seat of power be? A water throne. I want a throne that has like shooting jets of water overhead so that it kind of looks like a circle of water. Okay, well, that looks rather grand. <laughs> when, when, you, when you get rather wet if you're sat on this throne. Well, that, you know, this is this is a, a fantasy world, so I'm perfectly protected. <laughs> okay, fine. There's some there's some mystical power that yes. keeps water droplets from spoiling your hairdo. Okay, yes. that's not a problem. <laughs> right. So we have Atlantis with its capital Akateri, and you are sat resplendent on the throne, made of water, jets spurting through the air. What about the citizens of Atlantis? What national anthem are they singing? Well, I, I went with with my kind of a variation of my favorite of the, the American uh, patriotic songs. It's a song uh, by Lee Greenwood, Proud to be an American. So I just went with Proud to be an Atlantean. Uh, proud to be an Atlantean. OK, yeah, yes. I, I'm, not I'm not familiar with the song. Are, are you in a position to rattle a few bars out for me? Oh, I'm not going to sing for you, but I'll say the words. Uh, proud okay. to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. I won't forget the men who died and gave that right to me. Okay, That's so kind suits, of the, yeah, yeah. Suitably, suitably patriotic there. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and with that national anthem recollections, when, when do we hear it? Is it on every street corner, regularly played before the news or just on special occasions? When, when would we hear it? Well, you know, I hadn't thought about that, but now that you say that, yeah, let's play it on every street corner. I like okay. you thought. <laughs> yeah, so you, you so you basically have loudspeakers positioned on every street corner, playing out proud proud to be an Atlantan. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Okay, all right. What are the Atlantans eating as national dish? I have ambrosia, which tastes like whatever you want it to be, but it doesn't need to be prepared any special way. It doesn't need to be cooked. Which Sounds is like cute. tofu. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, so ambrosia, which tastes of whatever you want it to taste of, with no preparation. Yes, yes. Sounds like straight yes. from Willy Wonka's chocolate factory, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's practical. And when is the national dish eaten? Every every Thursday, whenever you want, special occasions only. I'd go with uh, yeah, every Monday. We start the week off with our with our ambrosia. Okay. So, kind of goes along with, you know, cleaning the slate often. So, you know, we're going to start the week off with it. Okay. I'd have thought with cleansing the, sl the slate, et cetera, you might have gone with um, a sorbet because that's a palate cleanser. Ah, oh, yeah, that would have been a good one too. Sure, but mm. ambrosia it is. Yeah. And so people are chowing down on a bowl of ambrosia on a Monday morning as they're listening to Proud to be an Atlantan blasting through the windows from the loudspeakers on the street corner. Oh, sounds like heaven. Well, it's <laughs> certainly an evocative image, isn't it? <laughs> What's the national animal of uh, Atlanta? I went with a dolphin. Just a dolphin. again, you know, they're, they're kind of intelligent creatures while still being somewhat territorial. Mm -hmm. Which is... Okay gonna work with with the rest of it and obviously you know a water animal so that's what i went with it was yes, either that but, or a killer whale so <laughs> i went yeah, the gentler well, it certainly route fits, it certainly fits with the aquatic theme doesn't yes. it yes yeah so w w would you have a particular dolphin in mind that suddenly comes along and tells you that uh, it need, you need to go and rescue the kids because they've uh, fallen out of the dinghy <laughs> the <laughs> yes, kind of the, the lassie of the sea. <laughs> the lassie. There we are. That's, that's the strap line to sell the national animal, the lassie of the sea. <laughs> okay. And in terms of your flag, which we see on screen there. Yes. It is a scene of water, which one would expect, with yes. Atlantis upon it. And... Tell me more about what we're seeing there. Well, obviously, I threw in the little, you know, lassie of the sea. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he's just kind of jumping over the uh, the name Atlantis. But the big key is in that, that corner down there, the don't start the fire. And okay. that's kind of the theme. 
don't start the fire. What is it? Yes. So rather than we'll put it out, just don't start it in the first place. Yes, exactly. Okay. And what what's the thought process between behind don't start the fire? Well, what it was was I, you know, as I was thinking about creating my my perfect world, I I had just seen something on the news, you know, the Diddy stuff and and all that's coming out there. And, you know, I tried to think, I want to go back to a time before it was so, before the the corruption had kind of been such a a mainstay and whatnot. And as I started going back, obviously, as the great Billy Joel once said, it's always been there, you know, since the world's been turning. And so my entire goal here is to go before that fire started and don't let it start. Historically, when would you identify as a time as when that corruption, that sickness wasn't there? Well, unfortunately, as I kept going back, I realized it always has been. And, I, you know, I'm going back to Eden, I guess. The Garden yeah. of Eden before that, that tree, of, that, that fruit was eaten. Before the because serpent came along and spoiled things by offering uh, the, the fruit, the forbidden fruit. Yeah, exactly. So and, and go all the way back then. Even, even, you know, I would go back a hundred years and I would say, no, nope, it was there too. You know, and that was exactly it. I just kept going back and back and yeah. Couldn't yeah, find I, that time. So I had to make it up. <laughs> I think, yeah. I think the issue is that wherever you find humans, you will find yes. the propensity for corruption and self-interest. Uh, yes. Primarily, of course, because of my kind. Now, what's your national motto? Don't start the fire. Makes sense. Don't, so don't let it happen. happen. Yeah, just don't let it happen. And so it's not to be taken literally in terms of we don't want you uh, setting fire to dumpsters and right. <laughs> people's laundry on the uh, on the line outside. It's basically, in a way, don't start the problems, don't start the corruption, don't start the mess. Right. Yes, it's a it's a medical metaphorical fire. But that's also why I did pick ambrosia that doesn't need to be cooked because I figure if it's the national dish. It shouldn't mm-hmm. require fire to prepare it, just as, you know. OK, so there's a literal aspect to this all as well. That, just with the dish. I mean, obviously, we're still going to heat our homes and whatnot, but it was just kind of a, a symbolic dish of, you know, we're not going to we're not going to prepare our dish with that fire if that's what we're so interested in avoiding. Yes, I was envisaging a rather cold and wet Atlantis because <laughs> beach is to say that they'll turn on the gas fire or the electric fire, <laughs> that immediately they'll be met with the, nap, with the, not, the motto, don't start the fire, and, they go, oh, <laughs> right. you know, and they'll leave it off and everybody sat there becoming hypothermic. Yes, and dripping, yes, it's a very so soggy the, place. <laughs> yeah, so the national motto is, don't start the fire, open brackets, except when we need it to be heated or do some cooking, close Except brackets. for practical reasons, yes, exactly. Except for practical reasons, all right, okay. What about Atlantis's National Day? What's it called and when would it take place? So I went with Aqua Day, obviously, the, the, the keeping with the theme. And I went with June 25th because I, I happen to be someone who loves Christmas. So I went for the, you know, the half birthday of Christmas. And it's a day kind of where you wipe the slate clean. You either you figure out whatever it is that you're upset about or whatever, you know, argument you're having, just fix it and move on don't let it keep going this water-based theme and the idea of wiping the slate clean it brings up images of baptism you know that's a great point yeah yeah a little bit like it that yeah Yeah. wiping the slate clean so we just do it annually so in, in essence there's an annual baptism of the citizens of atlantis yes yes to kind of bring up bring us back to that you know more pure state before before we get that corruption going. Would the citizens be expected on Aqua Day to immerse themselves in some form of water, jump in the lake, get in the river, go into the sea? Yes, yes, I like the sea. Okay. We, we go into the sea, and there's and there's a, a celebration of it. Not necessarily a a you know. Um, a deep thought process, but at least you're enjoying it. You're enjoying the water and the and the sea and the the feelings that you get there. Kind of a beach day. 
So everybody would be encouraged to put on their bathing costume and get into the sea. That's right. Yes. yes. And it would be done for the point of purification and enjoyment as a consequence of that. Yes. Good, wholesome fun. Yeah. I suppose as well, it's advantageous that you've picked summer. Yeah, yes. assuming, <laughs> assuming your country's in the Northern Hemisphere. Right. Yes. You would have a, a summer, so it's not too cold. For exactly. People getting into the ocean. It put me in mind for a moment. Are you familiar with the novel Children of Men? No, I'm not. I don't know that one. Well, in that, very briefly, it's the case that humankind has lost the ability to have children. So they suddenly realise that nobody, that women are no longer having children. And it focuses on the story in the United Kingdom, which uh, many other countries have fallen into anarchy as governments have fallen by the wayside, as people have turned to alternative forms of religion and essentially have rebelled, many people believing that there's some kind of punishment issued by God. And in England, that, that what's, what they do is that with elderly people, they decided in essence that they'd had enough. So a number of them drove to a place called Beachy Head, which UK listeners will be familiar with, is a cliff top which is notorious as a suicide spot. And so in the novel, many people went there and they jumped off Beachy Head and some died, some didn't, and they were found still alive at the bottom, which, of course, as the novel explains, somebody has to go and clean it all up. Mm. So in order to, they bring in assisted suicide. And what they mm. do is they, they call it a uh, quietus and they basically go out to sea on boats, medicated, and then are dropped into the ocean and drown. Wow. So there's a strange sort of purification about that, although it's rather final. Yes, yes, yes. But the same, yeah, yes, you're right. It is It is kind of that same thing. But there would be nothing so brutal as assisted suicide in Atlantis. No, no. Not, well, you know, I'm sure that there's always room for that, for those that, that do start the fire. But, yeah. Well, Maybe, that doesn't there may need to be. like assisted suicide as murder. If you're yeah, saying, well, yeah, <laughs> execution. You're, you're going to execute them. That sounds like state-sponsored execution. Yeah, I'm okay with that in you're some okay cases. Yeah, right. when I think about the things that, that we're hearing coming out of Hollywood these days, I could definitely get behind it. Okay, so if there's anybody having freak off parties in Atlantis. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're not going to la last long. They're going to get drowned. Yes. All right, well, that touches a little on what one of your policies could well be. And we're now going to address some of the policies where I'm going to give you a range of options. You okay. can only pick one, no deviation, no deflection, no caveats. You go with the one which is closest to what you would do as leader of Atlantis. We're going to start with your foreign policy. So is your foreign policy defence only? We're just going to look after ourselves here. Or Will you aid allied nations and defend Atlantis? Or would you adopt a more interventionist role as being a world policing role? Or are you going to be expansionist? So that there might be some historical territories that you decide you want to get back. Or would you be even more expansionist in terms of getting historical territories back and going after other people's resources? It might be that you decide that you need some more water, and so you're going to go and invade somebody else for that. Or is your policy simply, you've looked at me a bit funny, so I'm coming to invade you. What's the policy? Defence only. So you're just going to look out for yourselves? Just look out for us, yep. Why is that? We're going to, we got to keep that, that fire from, from starting, and the best way to do that is to be a bit isolationist. What if it would benefit, though, from encouraging other people to adopt a similar stance to you? Oh, I don't care about them. You don't I'm care just... about them? Nah, they're on their own. <laughs> OK, that's fairly clear. Looking out for number one. <laughs> cool. OK. Nuclear missiles. Is it the case that you don't have any? Or you'll have them, but deterrent only, meaning you'll never use them, but you won't let anybody know that. Or they'll only be used in retaliation. Namely, if somebody else has used nuclear weapons against you, or is your stance, yeah, let's get nuking? I would only use them in retaliation. 
but okay. I would have no problem using them in retaliation. Uh, if, if you're going to come for us, we'll we'll clap back. OK, they fire one nuclear weapon at you. What, what are you going to fire back? Ten. <laughs> OK, why ten? Just I'm just meaning if you if you shoot one at me, I'm going all guns blazing. All right. So, well, let's say you've got a thousand nuclear warheads then. Yes. So all all, all one thousand. All one thousand. Maybe 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 five hundred and keep five hundred in reserve in case the you know someone else gets a silly idea. Okay. So it's a pretty uh, scorched earth policy, if you will. So even if they bloody your nose, so to speak, with one nuclear missile, they're going to get 500 back at them. Right, yes. All right, okay. Yep. Atlantis is not to be messed with is the signal that's being given out here. Right, um, yes. Yeah? Yes. Let's turn to the question of press freedom. Is it the case that there is no state interference whatsoever in press freedom, or do you become involved on the grounds of national security only, or whatever you as the government deem sensitive results in interference, or are you going to ensure that the media is state owned? No state interference. Why no because, state interference? Because remember, we haven't started the fire, so there's nothing to be afraid of with free press. But let's this assume is, of course, somewhat the fantasy does, world. <laughs> the, na the nature of human beings being what it is. Yes. That some corruption arises. Okay. And that corruption means that certain people are putting a message that's out there, which runs contrary to what you want to say, that they're infecting your citizens with their propaganda. Yes, and that's that's a possibility, but this is a fantasy world. So, hey, no, maybe that's when the public executions come into play. I don't bother with the press. I just execute you. OK, so <laughs> ra rather than try and stamp out the message that's coming from these people, you're going to go to the source and root and yeah. branch, basically deal with it by executing them. Yes, I'm OK with that. OK, and so any message that counters yours, it means that somebody's going to be prone to state execution? Yes, okay. but again, it's the, you know, the idea that the fire hasn't started yet so that it shouldn't be enough. It shouldn't be too big of a problem because we've got Aqua Day, where we're cleaning the slates and we're kind of, you know, going back to our our essence. So mm -hmm. hopefully well, so, we can avoid it. But somebody basically says that um, President Recollections is an idiot. Okay, yes. so that's a criticism of you. I'm okay. With, I, they can criticize me. They I mean, I'm not perfect. You. Yeah, okay, I'm so not you, perfect. You, you won't do anything about that. What if they then say, well, you're an idiot because your policies with regard to cleansing really don't add up and they're costing us too much money? If it's a matter, uh, if the if their bigger issue is that it's costing us too much money, then as a society, we can debate it and kind of find a better solution. Mm -hmm. But if they're saying it in terms of, you know, you're crazy, that you know we want to we want to have more freedom so that they can go ahead and and build themselves into some sort of a corrupt creature well then we'll handle that with the executions i'm okay with that what if they suggest that that, that because there is this reliance on nuclear weapons and you made it very clear fire one or two okay. and you get 500 back at you that they suggest look we can do a good deal with, with uh, bongo bongo land and uh, we can purchase some more nuclear weapons off them. But you're aware that to do so would be utilizing a corrupt procurement system. But they're shouting from the rooftops. We can get a good deal to defend the nation of Atlantis by getting into bed with Bongo Bongo land on a deal with nuclear weapons. And they're telling everybody about this. Would you want to stamp that out? I don't know that I'd want to stamp it out. Because I do think that there should always be room for discussion, because if you don't discuss it, how do you know that you're picking the right path? So I would like to think that I would discuss it, but I could also consider, well, you know, if you want to if you want to go do that, go join Bongo Bongo Land. We don't need you here. So I would probably be pretty torn between trying to find that better way mm -hmm. through through convincing people that. I'm right with with you know reasonable arguments as opposed to just inflicting it on them. 
But if it comes to the good of society that they really just are unwilling to to adapt, then I'll, I'll, I'm okay either sending them off to bongo bongo land on their own or mm -hmm. there's always the public execution. Okay, so it's a fairly- The good of the many is more important than the good of the one. Okay, so it's a utilitarian state. Yeah. Okay. Religious tolerance. Is there complete freedom of worship and expression or freedom of worship unless you're provocative to others or it's your existing indigenous religion, but others are secretly tolerated or is the existing indigenous religion only? There's no tolerance and indeed there's persecution of unapproved religions or is your stance you worship me and only me remember? I would go with complete freedom of worship and expression, again, along the same kind of lines as the free press, is that in the ideal utopian society, you're going to be able to allow those freedoms without it destroying itself. Okay, so a cult originates, and they're called, yes. they're called the Aridans, and they believe in dryness, and they're not happy with the idea of being cleansed every June the 25th and they're not keen on all of this water in fact they want to dry it up hence they are the Aridans are they allowed to espouse these views of basically um, evaporating the water and turning sections of your nation into desert I feel like they should be allowed to have those thoughts Without well, the more it, the thoughts, the more than thoughts, uh, they're, they're allowed to have that practice. They're allowed to, to okay. practice that. Yeah. Without it destroying the society. So you're confident. But I can see that the, the potential is there. So I, I would guess that I would, again, try to encourage the reasons for our beliefs and our and our mottos and and our, you know, I guess what would essentially be a state religion which is the the water yeah but um I, I would try to encourage it and as long as they can do it without without infringing on the right of the state's mottos and beliefs then i yeah, i want to be able to let them do it they're not buying your way they're completely yeah. against the fluid approach of atlantis they're all about the dryness they're not yeah. buying it and they're advocating that the water be turned off, that there is no aqua day, that they want it to be a dry nation. Yeah, yeah. I, I it's gonna it's gonna cause a problem. It is, but that's the that's yeah. what when you have complete freedom of worship and expression. Yes. And and again, I, I would like to believe that I would handle that in a fair and just manner while giving them those freedoms, but I could just so as easily you, see how, myself coming down with the hammer. A, how would you handle it in a fair and just manner? Again, trying to, as long as they can can keep it from, infr because just like I can't, I shouldn't be able to infringe my religious beliefs on someone, they can't create something that infringes on others either. and. If but they are able, is it's freedom of worship unless you're provocative to others, right? That which is where the problems come in. So, I, I I would try to do. I would try to to make it work, but at the same time, good of the many is more important. So if it becomes a point where they just are not able to adapt, or they are just infringing too much, I also don't have a problem saying, you know what, I gave you a shot and you blew it. So in, in actual fact, it isn't complete freedom of worship and expression. It's freedom of worship unless provocative to others. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. Let's look at the question of equality now. Is it the case that minorities are actively supported, protected and gain positive discrimination? Or minorities are protected by anti-discrimination legislation? Or we promote ability. We're not here to fill quotas. Or minority issues are ignored after all, they're just a nuisance. Or minorities are actively persecuted because, well, who really cares about them? Let's get rid of them. Equality, we promote ability. 
we don't fill quotas. But then again, our society here in, in Atlantis is, is very, there is no minority, so to speak. Everybody's who they are. They just are who they are. And it's, there's no grouping of people. Mm -hmm. So there's no need for quotas because everybody is, is equal. Well, the, no classification. The, the Aridans are complaining about the fact that given the views that they espouse, they're regularly overlooked for particular positions. Mm. Um, but they're not particularly well equipped for those positions. So you would just say to them, well, unfortunately, it's based on ability. We're not giving in to you as a minority Aridans and giving you a position just because you're an Aridan. Yes, I would definitely say that. Yes, okay. we're not giving in. Understood. We're going to turn now to your short form cabinet, and there are five key positions that need to be filled. They can be filled with actual people, fictional individuals. And the first one is who would be your chief of defense? Teddy Roosevelt. Speak Why? softly and carry a big stick. Okay. Speaks for itself. Yep. <laughs> who, who do we find as foreign secretary? Ronald Reagan. Anybody who did what he did with the Cold War, I, I can get behind that. So when he's going to, so he's going to have the version of Mr. Gorbachev tear down that wall. Yes, although I say that knowing that there is a bit of a contradiction in the concept that I would probably happily build a wall around my country, but still. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Okay. Yes, because it's a sort of an isolationist approach right. you've adopted so ronnie might find himself a little bit frustrated perhaps he might but he could, he could watch some cowboy movies i guess <laughs> yes and at the same time you know you, you want different ideas i don't always have to listen to him though he's my he's in my cabinet but he's not in charge no understood you're in charge right okay who's your chief scientific officer galileo because okay. even though he kind of rocked the whole foundation of <laughs> of Catholicism with you know his his scientific knowledge, he still remained a Catholic his whole life. And there's there's something to be said for that that he was able to find a balance personally, if not mm -hmm. if nobody else felt that, at least he did. What do you think that he will bring in particular that will assist with the um, scientific aspect of your country. That he's not afraid to look for, you know, the truth. And, and at the same time, he, his goal was, he, he wasn't doing it to destroy Catholicism or to destroy that foundation. He was looking for science, for the, for the facts of science. He was studying it for the sake of science. But he knew that there was, you know, a balance to be had and that, you know, he wasn't, he, he was still able to believe himself personally. So I thought that, I think that he found a good balance and he can still open up people's eyes to the to, to science. He's open to it without it being the only option. Without while still being able to maintain some pure, you know, the, 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 the traditional beliefs, I guess. Okay. And when you're having those cabinet meetings, would he be introduced when you say, I see a little silhouette of a man, Scaramouche, Scaramouche, <laughs> would you do the Fandango? Yes, and I would like that. Lightning, very, very frightening me, <laughs> Galileo, Galileo. Would that be how he'd be introduced? Yes, absolutely, be, every but, time. <laughs> excellent. Well, a sound choice certainly there for Chief Scientific Officer. Now we're going to turn to whoever it is is holding the purse strings. Who's going to be the Treasury Secretary? It's my brother, because everything that man touches turns to gold. Ah. He's just, he just has that, that ability. <laughs> brother, Mi brother Midas. He, hmm? Brother Midas. Yes, he, yes, I do. He's, he, I, what I was trying to originally, I was originally going to say Trump, but I, that's too political now. I was thinking Trump of the 80s and 90s, you know, the, the business entrepreneur version. Yeah. And so... The person that I know that is most like that is my brother. <laughs> right. OK. So whatever he does, he succeeds in. Yes. Yes. Is that by fair means or foul? By fair means. He's just good at what he does. What does he do? 
he well he was actually he's retired now because mm -hmm. he retired at the age of 50 but he was in, in corporate real estate in new york city so uh -huh. that's why he's kind of my my version of my personal trump <laughs> okay did he have interests beyond real estate he does he was he, he I, well, his other interests, not necessarily his business interests originally, but he's turned it into it where he now races cars. Okay. Yes. So we've got a car car racing, real yes. estate background, treasury secretary. Yes. <laughs> and, he's diverse. Uh, and any accusations of nepotism? No, no accusation because he's so good at it. Nobody would question it. Oh, right. Okay. I mean, so... w when you're when you're that good with money. Everybody's happy. Fair you keep enough. the state flowing. All right. So that's four members. Who's our fifth? Is the minister for fun? Who's that? I went with Henry the Eighth because, well, despite uh, the the you know pesky mm -hmm. beheadings, the his court ha was known for its lavish entertainments. Ah. Okay. So as long as you don't get in the way. Well, yeah. I mean, it just if you if you forget the fact that it would you know that that there was the the downside of Henry VIII's court when it, if you just look at his entertainments they're pretty good. I may not be into a bear baiting myself, mm -hmm. but for the time that was considered a lavish entertainment. Same thing with jousts. You know, it might not be my style, but they knew how to have fun. And if he could do it then, I figure he could do it for Atlantis. What if his idea of fun was beheadings? Well, yeah, that would be a downer, wouldn't it? Well, <laughs> but we have state-sponsored execution. You mentioned that earlier on. True. That is true. You could make it entertain, you know, pay-per-view kind of thing with, yeah. with the executions. Exactly. I'd be open to it. If we're talking about, you know, these corrupt people again, I, I would have no. I would enjoy that. You yeah. Know, he did. Now, you've gone for all men in your cabinet. Oh, I have. You're right. Well, yeah, I'm okay with that too. They're my little my little harem. <laughs> okay, so you except you, for my brother. <laughs> it's been it's been decided on ability, not quotas. Yes, exactly. All right, so that's the short form cabinet. Which country would be your major ally? Ah, uh, no one. Well, I'm that's not in interested. keeping that's in keeping with your earlier stance, so that makes sense. Yes. Which country would be your main enemy? Every one of them. You make an enemy of every country. I, I don't necessarily make an enemy of every country. I just, I have no problem being everybody's enemy. If you want to call me your enemy, fine. How would you trade if you, if every country is viewed as an enemy? We're, we're self-sufficient. We've got, we've got some sort of magical powers. Cause remember, I'm not getting wet with my, with my throne and I've okay. got the ambrosia going. So there is an element of, of the magical. Okay. So I, we've got you everything. Just, you can just magic up some uh, yes. oil <laughs> yes. as when as and when required. You don't have to have a trading partner in that respect. And right. Jolly, or or make treatment. up a come up with a with an alternative an alternative um, method of doing whatever it is that we don't have the resources to do. We need mm -hmm. oil. Well, you know what? Guess we're going to have to find a different way to power everything if we don't have oil. Water, perhaps. There you go. Yeah, make it work. I, I, I'm not sure how effective a, a water wheel driven motor vehicle would be, but I suppose yeah, you could go back to everybody being on boats. Oh, good. Yeah, that's a good way. Mm -hmm. And our boats run on sail, wind, or sailboats. Yeah. Or the, <laughs> or the flow of the river, if they're on that's the river. That's true. Or yes. utilizing the currents and the tides. Yeah. Okay. Make would it work. any particular group not be welcome in Atlantis? outsiders we just we, we don't want you if we can maintain our society the way i want it mm -hmm. then there's no reason to bring in others you, you you're just going to cause problems so shades of north korea then yeah yes <laughs> i would All like right. i hate to think that but yeah <laughs> yeah okay now we're going to give you a chance to flex your muscle recollections as the leader of atlantis by detailing five foundation policies of your government these can be anything you wish. So what's your first policy? Well, the first one is is the whole theme that kind of overrides it. You know, if we don't start the fire, then there we can't have a fire. So it's it goes back to the whole premise of we got to go to a time before 
that fire is started and that and that human nature corrupt Pandora's box was opened. Mm -hmm. So we're we're not going to open that box and we avoid things that are going to open that box. Then I would say public shaming is always encouraged, which I guess goes on with why I'm I'm willing to do those public executions in some cases because yeah. it, if you're going to if you're going to inflict things onto the society that just don't work for it, I have no problem making an making an example of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, so the first policy is we don't start a fire, we can't have a fire. What's your second policy? Corruption destroyed. Destroy corruption. Knock it out. If if you see the the hint of it, then let us know, and we're gonna we're gonna work on on avoiding it and destroying it. Okay. What what does corruption look like to you? Corruption looks like having your brother as the treasury secretary no <laughs> no yeah. that's okay we're okay with that that's all right nepotism's okay yeah yes but corruption would be the entitlement that makes you feel that you are above the law that that's corruption because at the end of the day those that's how it starts right they, they they're above the law they can do what they want regardless of what boundaries they should respect so i'm going to find a way to get rid of it i don't know what it is but i'm going to try corruption evidently is something that's close to your heart personally yeah yeah yes yes does that come from something in the world as we know it that's forged forged your view in this respect have you been a victim of corruption or no i think it's more that I've been a victim of people who who act like they are entitled to hurt people. Yeah, I would say that's probably where where it comes from. And then when I tried to take that feeling and kind of make it into a a, a society, you know, a, a, my own world, how what is it that I that I want to get rid of? And I want to get rid of that. And I guess that's kind of corruption is the way I kind of explain it. But isn't that, that isn't that the benefit of power that you're able to make these decisions that you're the one that's shouldering the responsibility for a nation so if you decide that uh, in order to direct sort of motorway building contracts to somebody that they paid you a bit of money well that's just you benefiting from the fruits of your endeavors isn't it yeah but if it's done in a way that question uh, questionable ethics I, I i guess it's the ethics that that make the difference yeah but the motorways, motorways but, are but, going to get built hmm? motorways are still going to get built so what does it matter yeah because it's it it breeds corruption down the line this time it might be justified this time it might be that i that you know i, I it's the right decision but mm -hmm. when you bring in that that willingness to bend the rules Mm -hmm. you're going to be willing to break the rules okay so corruption is to be destroyed mm -hmm. what's your third policy that was that the third was the public shaming i i encourage public shaming and uh potentially public ex execution is okay too but let's put okay. on pay-per-views so everybody what does, knows the boundaries what does public shaming look like for instance you get you shout out litter dropper unclean <laughs> <laughs> point at that person or that you basically write pedo on the outside of some uh, outside of some dodgy individual's house that that's public shaming yeah yeah you know i, I i'm i'm thinking the scarlet letter did, okay. did wonders for for you know maintaining some sort of societal norms in colonial new england so is there, is there any check okay balance on this public shaming yeah, there probably should be, but right about in the beginning, no. But hopefully, if if things go well, then it it doesn't need to be doesn't need to be used as often, and it can be relaxed, maybe. Well, but at first, it's probably going to be pretty the basis, ugly because there are human beings. That human beings are going to do things which are problematic at some point. Yeah, uh, that not everybody is going to be a model citizen. So what, what what are the things that people will be publicly shamed for? Publicly shamed. I guess it's it, essentially if you're doing things that are selfish, that are 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 thinking only of yourself. I, so there's a, there's a there's a pandemic, a particular yeah. type of flu 
and this lady at number 27 Acacia Avenue has gone and bought all the toilet roll in the local supermarket. Yeah. Do we publi publicly shame her? Yes, that would be public shaming yeah. as opposed to, you know, the people that we really deal with, with the public ex executions. I'm okay shaming if you're doing that because there's no need for it. You don't okay. need to be that way. What if and she it's... says, well, I've got the money and, I, you know, I go to the toilet a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you may, but you got to think of the good. And it's and I say that knowing that I'm I'm kind of flirting with a bit of a communist ideal, which is really not what I want to do, mm -hmm. but it may be necessary to kind of start out with that philosophy. All right. So people can be publicly shamed and you, yeah. and you enc encourage that. How, how do you encourage it? Um, weekly, weekly shamings at first. I, okay, I mean, so I'm, I'm wondering if I want the An stock. organized environment. Yeah. Will that to take place in your, what you, maybe a maybe a town hall where everybody brings forward their their grief their gripes and their complaints. Yeah. I could I could get on board with that, and of course it's going to be you know kind of like a judicial system. You know you're going to have your local government or your local public shaming, and then you know your more national version. Mm -hmm. McDonald's vouchers for people to shame other people. Yeah, but I'm sorry, what, what was it? You'd offer McDonald's vouchers to people. <laughs> they are encouraged to shame other people. You, you, you said you're encouraging people, so I'm just- Yeah, saying, that, you know. I, I, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe small rewards if you're, if you're willing small to bring reward. it forward. And, and, you know, I just don't want to get it into the point where it's, you know, people reporting their family members just for the, for the, for the prize more you oh, know that's a, bit, that's a risk isn't it that you get yeah. a, an official who decides that he's going he doesn't like his neighbor's new yeah. conservatory that he's put on so he thinks that's selfish because it's rather large and it blocks a bit of his view so he's going to dole out the mcdonald's vouchers to a, a lynch mob to publicly yes. shake the neighbor it's a risk isn't it yes it is but i again that in my mind, he'd be the one up for the shaming more so than whoever it is he's trying to shame. And the ideas shame, that are, shame are the shamer. Yes, our society has to create that discernment where they can find the 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 ethics in the in the situation and find which one's deserving okay. of the shaming, not of the not of the reward. Who's deserving of the shame? I'm more interested in them than the one who deserves the reward. And when the public shaming takes place, is this person brought out onto a scaffold and somebody says, let it be known that on the 3rd of June, John Smith did eat more of the breakfast cereal than anybody else. He is, self he is selfish. And the crowd all go, shame on you. Shame on you. Yes. Isn't there a movie that so they do that? Shame, shame. I think yeah, that's like probably, Bride. probably <laughs> there is. <laughs> will, they right. will they be encouraged to throw a range of rotten fruit at this person? Uh, I'm not going to go for the fruit, but I okay. could be considered for more serious offenses, more serious shamings, the yep. stocks, you know, where they're sitting there with their with their hands dangling on the wood. What about making them walk around with a heavy sandwich board, which gives details of what they've done? Oh, I could go in for that, depending on what they did, you know. I, it, try and make the shaming fit the crime maybe where you know if if you're shaming if if you're you're selfish well then maybe the, the shaming is involving you having to do for others what about somebody who's jumped the line in the in the local starbucks so they yeah. were selfish do they get the sandwich board treatment i don't know if they would get the sandwich board i think they would get the shouting they get the shouting okay yes. i'm sure we could work out a hierarchy Yes, the, the degrees of shame. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. What's your fourth policy, please? Be good. Just be good. What, what does that mean? Like? What's, what's good? Yeah, just not. Just don't be a jerk. I don't know. I, it, it's it's a very vague thing. I'll it's say. Just, it just it deals with it, again. It's it's. I'm just disgusted by people these days, and so. I, well, what does well, tell me? What disgusts you? I, the you know the diddy thing and and in the u.s right now with the with the hurricanes in north carolina and now another one coming in florida and someone has the nerve to say we don't have the money to help them i just i don't understand it i don't understand uh, 
Okay. I thought for a moment you were going to be disgusted with the weather. And I thought, how does that work? But uh, <laughs> yeah, you expand. No, yeah. Yeah, I, but, I understand. It's just be good. Just don't just don't be a jerk. Like it, it, figure it out. Work these people need help. Help mm. them. I think you might have problems with that policy. It's pretty amorphous. Yeah, but that's what that's the good, you know, it's a good it's good to be king. It's good to be able to say this is what I I say is is wrong. Yeah, and well, I know yeah. I'm not corrupt, and I'm not going to let the power corrupt me. So, okay. So Lord Acton's quote won't be applicable to you. Right. Yes. Okay. I, I'm 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 better than that. Okay. And <laughs> your your fifth policy? Leave us alone. Just leave us alone. Just let us do our thing. Mm -hmm. I don't want your outside influences. I don't want your money. I don't want your your fashion. I just leave us alone. We'll figure it out. Just leave us there, alone. There, there was a, have you ever seen the movie The Village? It was an M. Night Shyamalan. I have whatever seen it, yes. Where they created that, you know, they went off into a, a national park or a foundation park or whatever, and they created a perfect little society. And they just said, just leave us alone. We mm -hmm. just want to live here. Well, I'm not sure everybody right there would agree that it was perfect, seeing as well, yeah. they sought to escape, but still. But you, you basically want to be left, left to your own devices, as, as the Pet Shop Boys once sang. Yes. Exactly. Lose okay. Long. Well, recollections, thank you very much for sharing your vision of Atlantis. Valuable viewers, is Atlantis a place that you could get on board with? Do you think to yourself, you know, there's nothing more that I would like to do is wake up on a Monday morning and scoff some ambrosia whilst <laughs> looking out for that dolphin as my national animal? I'm on board with the concept of don't start in the fire. I don't want any corruption. I don't want people coming to my country. I don't want anybody who is corrupt having any involvement with me. I just want to be left alone. And I'm content in understanding that if somebody fires a nuclear weapon at me, we'll send 500 back. If that's your kind of country, then you can express your support for it. But if you think, oh no, no, I really can't get on board with that. Ambrosia does not sound tasty to me and I'm not really big on water, then you can express your thoughts and views in the community section by voting. All it remains for me to say is recollections. Thank you for sharing your vision of if I ruled my world. Thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure. You're welcome.